Hello, comeback trumpet players. This is Trumpet Comeback Guide video number six. We're going to talk in this video about equipment. What is equipment? We're talking about mouthpieces, we're talking about trumpets, and we're talking about also, I'm hoping I remember at the end, gadgets. Now, the most important thing that I teach my students about equipment, talking about the mouthpieces and the trumpets, is that the internal dimensions are more important than the brand. I'm not suggesting that there's no great brands. Of course, there's great brands. If you have a trumpet from a great brand, but it's the wrong size for you. If you have a mouthpiece from a great brand, spend lots and lots of money on it, but it's the wrong size for you, then it's you just wasted all your money. The brand does not. So now, now the, the brand is important. After you figure out what your size is. And see, that's the thing most of us don't know yet. When we first get started on this journey, part of the journey is finding out which equipment works best for you. And I'm not talking about brand. I'm talking about size. Do you use a shallow mouthpiece or a deep mouthpiece? Do you use a... a uh, a closed throat or an opened up throat? Do you use a, a, a wide back four or a tight back four? Do you use a sharp rimmed mouthpiece or a uh, curved rim mouthpiece? Should it be a thick rim or a narrow rim? Those dimensions matter more than who made the instrument, who made the trumpet. Same thing with the trumpet, right? We have the bore size, we have the the flare of the lead pipe, we've got the 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 gap stuff, we've got the the tuning, where is the tuning slide? Um because you know you can have reverse slides, you can have the slide on the, the tuning on the bill. Um my my pudgy trumpet has tuning on the 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 left. Um, where the where the first valve slide would normally go. Um, what is the flare of the bell? How 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 big is the bell? What's the stroke of the valves? These things matter more than who made the instrument. And I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't buy expensive equipment, but until you find out what sizes you should be playing. It's kind of a waste of money to spend a lot of money on a on a high name brand. I actually recommend for my students that they buy when they first start used trumpets, used mouthpieces so that they can get it cheaper and try things out. See what happens when you play on a large bore trumpet. See what happens when you play on a, a small tr uh, bore trumpet. See what happens when you play on a, on a bell that has a big flare. See what happens when you, um, you know, all of that stuff. Shallow mouthpiece, deep mouthpiece, all of that. And the problem with going with, now most of us, when we buy a horn, we just buy a horn. Right now, there are some makers that will spend time with you to help you determine which mouthpiece or trumpet is best for you. Here's the problem with that I have heard, I'm not, and this does not apply to all of them, it just applies to some of them. I have heard people say that 
when they did this with some mouthpiece makers and some uh, trumpet makers, that the without asking anything about the, the, the person trying to buy the horn or the mouthpiece, they would say stuff like, what style of music are you playing? So if it's jazz, you should play that mouthpiece. If it's classical, you should play that mouthpiece. If you're playing salsa, it should be that other mouthpiece. That's ridiculous. That is not going to help you. Only There's a slight chance that it might help you, but it's just a slight chance. And now, the flip side of this is also true. Let's, let's keep this in mind. Let's be honest about this. If you try an, uh, an instrument or a mouthpiece that didn't work for you, don't go around and say that that brand is a terrible brand. Come on, right? Don't say that's a terrible brand just because it didn't. The chances are, if it didn't work for you, it was because you were playing on the wrong size. So anyway, getting back to, to working with a maker. Sometimes you can meet a maker that will actually meet with you and help you find what works best for you, not just by saying, um, do you play high notes or do you play low notes or do you, but actually working with you as a person, not using some preset formula, oh, if this, then that. No, we want someone to work with us and, 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 and work with our personality. You know, the, the, the tendency is if you say, oh, I play jazz, they want to give you a lead mouthpiece <laughs> or a lead trumpet. But people who are heavy duty into jazz don't play on that kind of equipment. They play on bigger equipment because it gives them that more jazzy sound. Right? I mean, when we say jazz, what are we talking about anyway? There's a whole bunch of different kinds of jazz. So anyway, that's that's what I start with always, is that the inner dimensions are more important than the brand. And then secondly, the materials are second most important. Right? So you could get, if you prefer heavy wall, and you get the best brand name out there, and you get a thin metal instrument, it's not going to be right for you. So, so yes, the materials make a difference too. That's second most important. And then, yes, the brand does make a difference. At, once you find your size, the brand makes a difference um, in terms of the, the detail, right? There's details from one brand to the next that you can't get. So like if, if you like this brand A and in terms of the details, and what I mean is, is the, the, the construction is a certain way and it creates certain tendencies in the sound. Now you can understand why I say the inner dimensions are more important because if you're playing the wrong inner dimensions, you never get to that. You never get to a point where those delicate intricacies are making any difference. Because you're playing on what is essentially for you a, cra a crappy horn, right? A mix match. You know, that's like trying to play basketball in an entirely wrong size shoe. So, anyway, so um, we want to. Um, take into account the brand once we get to the the size and 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 the brand. So, like for example, I play on my B flat. I play on a Bach. I've played on Bachs since high school, and the sound I hear in my head um, for most gigs. Is that sound now? I have another horn, another B flat, a pudgy, 
And I hear that in my head too, but for a different kind of gig. So those two are very different instruments. Um, so just talking about, um, now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the pudgy is not appropriate for my other gigs. It's, it's not appropriate for the other gigs, but not because it's a pudgy. Okay? See what I'm getting at? That horn has a huge bill. The, it's just a huge instrument. And it's got this dark, deep sound. But that dark, deep sound is caused by the internal dimensions, not by the craftsmanship. I like the craftsmanship, don't get me wrong. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't have the horn. Anyway, I, I hope I've uh, differentiated those three things for you. The internal dimensions, the materials, and then the craftsmanship. Which, talking about the brand, right? Now, we want to get back to what we said in the previous video, videos. Um, we want our purpose to come into play when it comes to equipment. So let's say, I'm just giving this hypothetically, let's say you never really learned how to play high in high school. And it's something you always felt was unfinished in your life. So the reason you're playing trumpet, your purpose for playing trumpet, again, as a comeback trumpet player, is to finish that to where you you want to get the infamous Super C. Well, if that's what you're shooting for, shouldn't your equipment be in a line with that purpose? So when we when we play in the upper register like that, we tend to not play on huge equipment. It's not that it makes it harder to play in terms of, you know, strength. But it does make it harder to play because you're not getting the right sound and you have to work harder to even get close to that sound that you're looking for. So you want to play on shallower mouthpiece and not necessarily bigger equipment, but I really believe that if you want to play high notes, you should have at least a small lead pipe. Now, there you can have a small lead pipe and a big bell. That works great. I hope that makes sense. The, the lead pipe is more important, I think, for the lead player than the bore size and the bell. You want to have a smaller lead pipe. So that's just one example. Let's say you're, we talked in that second video about um, your purpose is to honor God. Well, now it's not about playing high. Now you're playing in church. You want to honor God or glorify God with your music. You want to have equipment that helps you do that. And I think that's very important. And that should be what, now let's take that, let's look at the purpose and now take it back to these three things that I said. We want to find internal dimensions first that fulfill your needs in, within your purpose that you have determined, this is my purpose, this is why I'm playing trumpet again. This is why I've come back after such a long time off. The first thing, Take that purpose and find the right size, the internal dimensions. Second thing, find the materials. Do you want thick metal or thin metal? I love those beryllium bronze on the Shoki. I wish I could get one of those, but I don't know what I would do with it. But just the idea of having that really, really, really soft uh, bronze. On, on a trumpet, and the times I've heard it, it, you know, like on an E flat trumpet, I think they have that as an option. Yeah, so you you want to know what the materials are, 
that work best for you for your purpose. Then the third one, the brand and that manufacturing. Uh, what do I? What did I call it earlier? Craftsmanship. Um, that's associated with the brand. You don't get the same craftsmanship necessarily from one brand as you do from another because they have their own factory, their own workers, and there's actually a culture within those companies. And and they lean this way or they lean that way in their manufacturing and their craftsmanship, right? So we want that craftsmanship at the when we get to the higher levels we want that craftsmanship to align with what we're doing with our purpose okay that's the second most important thing is that you have to have your equipment align with our purpose now before i sign off here there are a bunch of gadgets out there i would say that 80 percent of them are a waste of money and I'm going to say it one more time. The purpose has to prevail here. What is your purpose? Why are you playing trumpet again? And how is this gadget going to help you uh, achieve that? How is the gadget going to help you achieve that purpose? And I will warn you to be weary of quasi-scientific explanations about why stuff is so important or why stuff that works or stuff like that. Now, if you... So there are things that I think are of some value. I think having a, a mouthpiece visualizer is a great thing to have, I think, because then you can look in the mirror or you can have a teacher look at what's happening inside the mouthpiece. I think that's great. Um, what else? There, there are mouthpieces that have springs on them so that if you're using too much pressure, it'll open up and you can't play anymore. So it forces you to not use as much pressure. I like that. I would never use it. But for people who don't approach pressure the way I approach pressure, that would be a great thing for them to do. So I'm not against it. I just wouldn't use it because my method doesn't call for it. So yes, there are some things if 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 the gadget helps you get from where you are to where you want to be in your purpose, then go ahead and get the gadget. Just be aware that 90 80% of the time, I'm just guessing, but 80% of the time the gadget is just a way for them to get money from you. Now, if you're one of those who's um, had a good life and you have money to blow on stuff like that, by all means, go ahead. Right? I'm, I'm really saying this for the people who don't have that luxury. All right. So that's my stance on the equipment. The most important thing is the internal dimensions. And it doesn't matter if the horn is a beat up old olds <laughs> from 1930 i just made that up i don't know if they had olds in 1930 but you get the point um if the internal dimensions are right then the horn is right for you at least that first step then you can move on to the next step and and get the stuff that has the right materials okay that's if you have any questions about this please feel free to ask down in the comments or if you want to join us on our uh, kind of weekly, it's been weekly since the pandemic, um, weekly question and answer session. Uh, it's a live stream question and answer session. And if you can't join us live, you can go to my blog or you can, I always post the video 24 hours in advance so that you can uh, Ask your questions there too. So if you have questions about what I'm sharing with you here, please feel free to either ask here on the video or ask on the, the live Q&A. Um, other than that, I'm going to say God bless you and we'll see you on the next video.
Thank you for watching this video. I wanted to spend just a minute to let you know that there's a better, more convenient, more organized way to access all of these videos. We have literally hundreds of videos here on YouTube and, and quite frankly, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So to make it a little bit more organized and easier for you to access what you want to access, I created a separate page, a separate area on my website, that's eddielewis.com. And if you go to eddielewis.com, click on the menu, click on videos. It will take you there. I have the videos categorized. And then within those categories, some of them, like the, the educational videos, you can click on it and go in there and look for the videos specifically that you're looking for. Okay? So go to eddielewis.com, E-D-D-I-E-L-E-W-I-S.com. Thank you very much.